So you're driving along on a nice sunny day. You got your tunes pumping. Everything is going great. But you neglected to notice the patch of nails that you ran over about 100 yards back. So a few minutes later, you get this light that pops up on your dashboard. And the light looks like a horseshoe with an exclamation point in the middle. That light is telling you that one of your tires is low on air. Maybe more than one. But either way, that light is telling you that you have low air pressure in one or more of your tires. This is called the Tire Pressure Monitoring System, and today we are going to explain how this system works on Auto Fix Pile. The main reason for the Tire Pressure Monitoring System is to avoid accidents caused by underinflated tires on the highway at high speeds, or at any speed. When a tire loses its air pressure or becomes underinflated, the sidewalls of the tire flexes excessively and it loses its integrity. The stability of the tire is lost, it becomes more vulnerable to blowouts and flats, and causes all kinds of dangerous situations, especially in the warmer months of the year, in the summer when everybody's taking long trips and it's hot and you're driving your car for a long distance. If you have an underinflated tire, that tire will heat up a lot, the sidewalls will be flexing the entire time of that trip, and I'm sure your vehicle is going to be loaded to capacity. You got two or three passengers, maybe four or five passengers bunch of luggage in your car so you're putting a lot of load on that tire and an under inflated tire is more likely to cause a blowout and cause a serious if not fatal accident so the tire pressure monitoring system became mandatory in 2007 and in 2008 pretty much every vehicle sold in the United States has a tire pressure monitoring system of one form or another be it direct monitoring or indirect monitoring the European car market has been using tire pressure monitoring on their passenger vehicles since the 1980s. And General Motors have been using a tire pressure monitoring system on their Corvettes since 1991 and continue to do so to this date. Now in the picture right here, you'll see three different types of direct TPMS sensors. These are the most popular types of sensors that are used today on most vehicles. The first sensor you'll see is a sensor attached to the metal valve. It's actually an aluminum valve and the TPMS sensor is attached to the inside of the wheel, inside of the tire. And that's one of the more popular types of sensors right now. Most vehicles have that. And um, the most common type of problem what you'll see with these sensors is corrosion. If you live in a region where there's a lot of snow, a lot of humid weather like the northeast where I'm at, then these sensors tend to crack at the valves and they'll leak. The nut that holds the sensor together, that holds the sensor in place and keeps it sealed nicely up against the rim, they'll tend to crack and split. And sometimes even the part where you'll fill the air into, where you take the rubber cap off, that tends to separate and you'll have all types of issues once these sensors get, you know, just a few years old. So um, if you have this type of sensor in your car, the most critical thing that you can do is to make sure that you have a valve cap on there at all times. and. And don't use the metal valve caps, they have a tendency to get stuck onto the um, valve stems. Um, corrosion gets in there and it'll just get stuck, you won't be able to unscrew it, so don't use metal valve caps. So the next type of sensor is basically the same. The only difference is that it uses a rubber valve stem instead of an aluminum valve stem. But these rubber valve stems are a lot less susceptible to weather changes and the caps won't get stuck on there. You can use your metal caps on these type of valve stems if you want. And um, they're just a lot more resistant to weather conditions and a lot more durable. And this seems to be the TPMS sensor system that most manufacturers are going with nowadays. I see GM is using it, Nissan is using it, Ford is using it. I think Honda is using this as well. I'm not sure what other manufacturers are going to the rubber valve TPMS system. But um, I know that a lot of manufacturers have switched from the aluminum valve stems to the rubber valve stems. So we don't need to really cover this system too much because it's pretty much the same as the previous system with the aluminum valve stems. The only difference is, is that it has rubber valve stems. And identifying a vehicle that has rubber valve stem TPMS sensors is typically easy. You could um, look at the valve cap. Most of the time the valve cap will be longer than your standard valve stem cap. And um, there will be other indicators such as maybe a rib, a rubber rib going around it, a rubber ring going around it. But there will be something to indicate that this is not your typical, your typical normal valve stem. So before you go and um, rip those valve stems out, before you change the tire, 
You may want to take another look at it just to make sure you don't destroy your TPMS sensor while you're trying to rip the valve stems out. Okay, so the next type of TPMS sensor is the band sensor. This is the type of sensor that Ford used. Um, they don't use them anymore. This is what they used in their earlier vehicles. I'm not sure exactly what years, but um, you won't find them in their vehicles nowadays. Nowadays, they're using the valve, the rubber valve stem type TPMS sensor. There's no real difference with this sensor except that it's not located in the valve stem and it is usually located 180 degrees opposite of the valve stem. So if you're not sure if the car has a TPMS sensor and it's a Ford, just look at the valve stem. If it's a plain Jane valve stem and it's a 2008 or newer, then this vehicle has either had its TPMS sensor removed or it has a band style type TPMS sensor that Ford used in their earlier vehicles. And the band style TPMS sensors are located 180 degrees from the normal valve stem. So you look at the valve stem and then just go opposite of that on the wheel. And that's where you would find your TPMS sensor inside the wheel. Now there's no outside indicators if this car has a TPMS sensor. So you'd have to pay attention to the dashboard when you start the car up, you'll see the um, the low tire light illuminate, you know, to do the bulb check when you turn the key to the on position. Or if there's a fault with the system, you'll see the TPMS light illuminated, you know, all the time where it'll say low tire or something like that. And this, you know, this is a good indicator that this Ford has a TPMS sensor that is a band style sensor. Now what's different about the Ford TPMS sensor system that is a band style? Nothing really, they work the same way as any other TPMS sensor using a radio frequency to communicate to the receiver. So um, this sensor will be serviced and diagnosed pretty much the same way you would service and diagnose any other tire pressure monitoring system sensor. Alright, so there are two types of tire pressure monitoring systems in use today. There's the direct system and then there's the indirect system. The direct system uses a sensor inside of each wheel which operates on radio frequency be it 315 MHz or 433 MHz. Each wheel has a sensor inside that sends a signal to a receiver and the receiver is looking for a particular ID number from each one of those sensors. It's an identification number and if the receiver does not see that correct identification number it will cause the tire pressure monitoring light to signal a fault code. It may not be a code, it may just be the light flashing or it'll say TPMS on a dashboard or something like check TPMS. But either way it will trigger some type of a fault in the system that will alert the driver that something's wrong with the tire pressure monitoring system. Now if there's just an issue with the tire being low, low on air, then you know the tire light, the low tire light will just illuminate the low tire light that looks like that that will come on your dashboard, and it's just an indication that one of your tires is low on air. All right. So the other type of tire pressure monitoring system is the indirect tire pressure monitoring system. There are no sensors involved. The, um, the system works basically on wheel speed. If your tire is low on air, the diameter of the wheel is gonna be smaller, and the ABS sensors, the wheel speed sensors on each one of the wheels, there's one on the left front, right front, right rear, left rear. There's one on each four corner on every wheel in the car. And the ABS module or whatever module is used to monitor that system is gonna pick up on the difference in wheel speed and it will alert the driver that, hey, one of your tires is low on air. Or you, you probably can have the wrong size tire on the car. But as long as you have all of the correct size tires on the vehicle, then the system will operate normally. I mean, that's the only disadvantage to the system is that you have to have all the correct size tires on your car. And who wants to drive around with mismatched size tires anyway? You know, unless your car is staggered like a 350Z or something like that where you got bigger tires in the back. But either way, the system has been calibrated for that type of situation. So if you have a car with an indirect tire pressure monitoring system and you have staggered tires, the system's going to work properly because it's expecting to see, you know, it knows what to expect. It knows what to see. But basically, indirect tire, indirect tire pressure monitoring systems uses wheel speed to monitor the tire pressure. It doesn't actually monitor the tire pressure, but it just takes an estimate takes an estimated guess as to which tire is low based on the wheel speed. 
low tire is going to spin faster, so it's going to stand out. The module is going to see it yeah. and it's going to trigger the low tire pressure warning light. That's it. How did that go? He's indirect. This guy right here. Yeah. This guy right here. He's a pain in the butt. Yeah. I wouldn't watch his videos at all. Mm -mm. Don't subscribe to this guy's channel. He's a jerk. <laughs> All right, so this is an example of a TPMS sensor being activated using an, active, an aftermarket TPMS activation tool. First step is to turn the tool on, obviously. And then you'll want to put the vehicle information in. We are using a Ford, so we'll hit the F for Ford. Select Ford from the list of vehicles that start with an F. And then we'll select um, Edge because we're using a Ford Edge, a 2012 Ford Edge, which is a 315 megahertz sensor. And then we'll hit the Diagnose Sensor button and we'll put it right next to the um, tire. You don't want to put it on the rim. You want to put it close to the rim but right by the tire. And what it will do is it will activate the TPMS sensor and it will read all of the information from that sensor. This can be used to relearn the tire's position and or the new sensor ID to the TPMS module. And the vehicle displays the tire pressure for each wheel on the instrument panel or you may have a heavy duty vehicle where the tire pressure is 80 PSI in the rear and 50 PSI in the front. You will need to activate the vehicle's relearn mode and relearn the location of each wheel on that vehicle. Now to trigger the relearn mode on each vehicle will be different and you should consult with the vehicle service menu for the proper procedure. Now let's talk about basic TPMS operation and relearning. So as I mentioned earlier on in the video, there are basically two components to a TPMS setup. You have the transmitter which is the sensor in each of the four wheels and in some cases the spare tire as well. You also have the receiver which verifies the sensor belongs to the vehicle and translates the information from that sensor. Now if for some reason you end up having to replace a TPMS sensor in the right front wheel because the battery died, and by the way the battery life on TPMS sensors are anywhere from 5 to 7 years, you will likely end up with a situation where the new TPMS sensor ID does not match the sensor ID that the TPMS module is expecting to see. When this happens, the TPMS module will trigger a TPMS fault message to display on the instrument panel. This may be in the form of a flashing low tire light, a TPMS light, and or a text message that says to check your TPMS system. Now to correct the problem of having a new sensor with new sensor ID in the right front wheel, you will need to put your vehicle's TPMS module slash receiver in relearn mode or reprogram the TPMS module with the correct right front sensor ID. To do this, you will need to consult with your vehicle's service manual or do a Google search and hope that your TPMS system does not require a capable scanner or TPMS relearn tool to update the sensor ID in the module. Unfortunately, many vehicles do require special tools to update the sensor IDs in the module. Now there is another option in which you use aftermarket sensors from a different company, from different companies that allow you to clone the original TPMS sensor and therefore no relearn procedure is required. However, this procedure also requires special equipment and some vehicles will just not accept aftermarket TPMS sensors. So hopefully you now have a better understanding of how the TPMS system works and what is required to keep that light on your dashboard out. Now with that said, the most common problem with TPMS sensors that you will encounter is simply low tire pressure. Do not go to a gas station with a rundown and worn out air pump with highly inaccurate pressure gauge and think you will get good results. You cannot eyeball it either. You will need to get yourself a tire pressure gauge with some level of accuracy in order to satisfy the TPMS module. You can, however, find the required tire pressure for your vehicle on the inside of the driver's door jam as you see pictured right there.